Welcome to the Cedric Live Show. Today we have a special guest, Pamela Titi Kakonge. Pamela, welcome to the show. Thank you very I, much. I know you prefer to be called Titi. Titi. Yes. So you you founded an organization called Tunaweza. Mm -hmm. You're the CEO. Mm -hmm. It's a not-for-profit organization. Yeah. What, what does Tunaweza do? So Tunaweza is a non-profit organization that um, takes care of children with special needs. Yes. It's a, a center that offers quite a number of therapies and alternative learning for these children so they can be able to achieve their full potential. Yes. So pretty much we work with children who have special needs and you know special needs is quite a wide range yes. of, of, of needs. Yes. It could be even normal children who have difficulty in learning which they would call um, like learning disabilities. It could be children who have health related disabilities, yes. physical, mental. So we put them together and offer service that would help them reach their full potential just within their capacities. Okay, when you say, um, when you say um, children with special needs, of course it's broad. It's very broad. And yes. uh, I suspect you can't cover everything. Yes. And you have core competencies in, in different, in different which, what, when you say special needs, what do you mean? Okay. Special needs will mean any child who would actually not have the, the not not be able to express this language. Some child who would have some physical, mental, or any other form of disability. But the way I um, would best explain it would be that children who need extra help from normal children, like for instance, children who have physical disability will require physiotherapy, which we offer. Children who have mental or uh, may I say behavioral issues, yes. those would require occupational therapy, which we also offer. We also have speech and language therapy, which is given to children who could fall on, let's say, the autism spectrum or maybe have delayed speech or any form of delayed milestones in children. So we kind of cover most of the ranges that require therapy to right. put them in line with what I mean with what a normal child should be able to do so wh wh where is Tunaweza where is it okay. is it based in is it a place or just an organization well uh, Tunaweza is in Chiwatle it's yes. in Chiwatle here in Kampala yes. but again Tunaweza I chose the name Tunaweza just to represent the number of many people who come there because I think it's a place which offers therapy and we are we seem to be the only ones in East Africa that do the way we do it, a okay. multidisciplinary kind of arrangement. Right. So I chose to use the Swahili name Tunaweza. which means we can yes. and hence that's the Tunaweza. So we are based in Chiwatli and we have these services offered in one roof. Okay. So we offer physiotherapy, yes. occupational therapy, speech and language therapy, music and art therapy. We have aqua therapy, and then we also have alternative learning. So we have a special needs education class right. that helps children during, the learning, during their learning process. So maybe just to give you a brief background how it, it, it works, yes. or how, I, how it works. We first have to acquire a child who has particular needs from parents, yes. and then do an assessment. Right. When assessment is done, we okay. then actually um, look at the needs of the child. Right. This assessment is done by a group of um, professionals who are trained to identify these needs. So that assessment will help us categorize the child yes. in what areas, what program he best suits or she best suits. So it is from that background that we actually know that this child needs physiotherapy, this doesn't need the other ones, speech and language therapy, and then we help the parents, you know, um, manage their children. To but Titi, this, this is a lot of work. I mean, this is something that, it, 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 what's your motivation behind starting to Naweza? You know, you founded it, you run it, mm. uh, I, I, I suppose you solicit for all the support for it. Yes. What's your motivation? Well. Um, first, I started to Naweza because I also had a child who needed all these services. I had a child with special needs as my first daughter, firstborn. And uh, when we had this child, it was so difficult for us to find the help she needed here. Yes. So we kind of traveled quite a lot trying to find help. Yes. Until one day, 
in those many trips I had made because we went to Nairobi, went to South Africa, went to the States. Yes. We tried to really give her, try to find the therapists, which Uganda actually did not have. So it was quite difficult. So what actually motivated me to do this was a friend of mine who I met while I was away and she advised me, instead of you moving here and struggle with all this here and leave your family behind, why don't you go back and start something like this? So my attempt on it was to just get a few people from the States where I was and come and work with my child. But I realized the need was bigger than just my child. So I decided to make it open to everybody who, who wanted. And it was so hard for me to actually find therapists here until I visited my uncle in Imbale, who was running the Kiwa Hospital, Dr. John Mugamba. Yeah, we spoke about him the other day. He, they also, um, I think, have helped with hydrocephalus and yes. uh, so, spina bifida and things like that. Yes, there. so they do their operations. Yes. And of course, students who go through, under that, who go through that operation will still need therapy. So for those who he has worked with somewhere, referred to our center yes. and we work with them. For those who are in the east or that part of the country, actually get therapy from right. the, the hospital. So he helped me find the therapists who I recruited. And I also used my friend in the States to help me find therapists in the States. And they came here. And they came here. So that's how I started. So I brought my friend, came along with a professor and students from Boston University. And then I had those I had got from Dr. John Mugamba. Yes. And we put them together and we opened a center. This was in um, 2000, 2012. That's when you opened the center. That's when we attempted. Yes, that's when we actually opened the center. Yes. But it was so hard to penetrate and get uh, people to come to the, to come to the center because of the stigma that yes. is attached to children with special needs because of their ignorance, because of the fact that they had relaxed about it and said, you know, we don't have these services in Uganda. So why am I putting in so much money or putting in so much effort in helping this child yes. who may not in future be anything? So it was hard. The, we started serious operation and increasing numbers in 2013. So you've been in operation about five years? Yes, now five years. How many children do you have under your care now? Well, we ha the program runs in different ways. Yes. So for the everyday program, we see close to 45 children every day. But the number of children we see over a period of time, what we call like a quarter, go up to 270 something children. 270 because, something yes, children? Be yes, because because we have those who come in for an hour and go away. We have those who are in schools that we actually visit in schools and help from there. And we have those who are on the home program who are at home and we visit at home. And then we also have some organizations like the Good Samaritan and, uh, and, and, and other small homes that have invited us to go and help kids. Um, achieve. So we train the nannies on how to work with the children. We even train the teachers and we also train the few therapists that they might have in those small organizations. What's the biggest challenge that, you know, of course, yes, we're speaking about the children, yeah. but I know that in, in, in cases like this, yeah. it takes a terrible toll on, on the parents because some of them don't just have one child, they have multiple children. And of course, they, you know, you can only be one person. So you've got to look after the other children and uh, now you have a, a child with special needs. Yes. So it must be difficult. It's quite difficult and I believe that the biggest challenge that we have here in Uganda, one is ignorance. Some parents take, not, th not that they don't want, but they take forever to identify some of these needs. Yes. So by the time they actually come to seek help, the child has already grown. Are, not that he can't be helped, but it will be a little late. For instance, in developed countries, you will find that they will identify autism, which is their autism spectrum. Yes. They, they will identify autism at the age of two years. Let's just stop there All right. while we cut to break. Then you can talk to me a little bit more about autism. No problem. Back on the Cedric Live show with Titi, who is the CEO and founder of Tunaweza, an organization that helps children with special needs. 
So we were talking about autism, yes. uh, autistic children. And uh, I think my question was, you know, how difficult is it for a parent to manage, with, to manage uh, a child yeah. with special needs? Yeah, it's very difficult because by the time they actually identify that the child has a need, the child is grown. Right. So we don't have very good early intervention programs here. So it's kind of, it's hard. But that's not the end of it all. You can still find help early to avoid future, um, future complications. So I, I, I would say the biggest challenge is the parents being able to identify these early on time. Children who have brain damage, cerebral palsy, uh, hydrocephalus, those or microcephalus, those can be identified at birth. And yeah, maybe yeah. then processes can begin for early intervention. But again, because of the stigma, they will first want to hide a little bit or, or seek other means to get help without coming out for real help. So this kind of gets down onto the parents and disorganizes maybe the whole plan. By the time they come out, then maybe the child is already time for sitting, but she's, she can't hold up her head yet or the help she actually needs um, is, is a little late. But um, I just like encouraging parents to always see doctors. You know, when we have babies and we go home after having babies, as a mother, I know it, if the child is not sick, if the child doesn't have any complications, you will not check. And some of these conditions, you can never know unless you actually do your routine check. Yeah. So you have to follow the milestones. At every point, check out the milestone chart, which is normally given during antenatal. So you check out the milestone and say, my child should be sitting at six months, at four months. Why isn't she sitting? Right. Why isn't she, you know, trying to hold her head up? Or Is there a problem? Whatever, yeah. So you, you start seeking out those. But few... on some of these conditions, even pre-birth, you know, like, uh, for example, uh, I was speaking to a friend of mine a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, he's actually a movie star. Mm -hmm. He's called Boris Kojo. Mm -hmm. And he, he has a, a foundation called Sophie's Voices. Yes. Because his first child, his daughter, mm. was born with spina bifida. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that him and his wife have done mm. is, to, is to go around the world mm. promoting the use of folic acid, mm. taking folic acid during pregnancy, mm. which eliminates the chances mm. of, of, of these things happening. Yes. Um, uh, so I think, yeah, some can be identified even pre-birth. Yes. Others can be identified at birth. Yes. But there are others that depending on where you have actually given birth from. Some mothers give birth from home, some mothers give birth in small health centers that cannot identify some of these things. Yes. But yes, spina bifida can be identified even before birth. Sometimes children with Down syndrome can be, you know, yeah. a parent can see. So it's like behavior issues that can't be identified yes. at birth. For instance, autism. Yes. The child is normal until two where you start seeing this child is not speaking, this child is playing alone, this child has social issues. Yes. Yes. But physically, the child is normal. Yes. So it will take a toll on the parent to actually identify that oh, this child is not quite. So you're saying basically, mm. when 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 people have children, yes, they should go in for regular checkups um, and should also follow the milestone chart. There's a standard milestone chart, and I believe most uh, antenatal clinics have this chart. Just take a picture or even Google, just like we have yes. all these things with us. Maybe a parent in the village may not know, but it's also good if you go for this antenatal while you're pregnant, follow the milestone chart. Then you know that at this point, my child should be able to do this. Of course, all children don't develop at the same level, but there are some that are really extreme. So if you feel like um, six months, the child is not sitting, don't stay home. Yes. Yes. Go out and seek help. So when you come early, then you get the necessary intervention. Then you'll be able to do the things that you're not supposed to be. Like my daughter, she had a brain damage at birth. And they told me she'd never walk, she'd never talk, she'd never, you know, do the things a normal child does because it was her left side of the brain that was damage. affected. Yeah. But they told me again that if this child gets the help she needs early, then the left, the right side of the brain that wasn't damaged will pick on activities of the other side that was damaged. Because a, a child's brain is, past, I don't know the scientific term, but it's like, can be remodeled. 
Yes. Yes. So just like anybody gets um, an accident and you stop using your right hand, yeah, you, you learn, you, how, you to learn how to use the left hand. Yes. So that's the same thing. Right. So if you know Ali, you can actually prevent all these things. Today she walks, she talks. She has a few difficulties in some areas like learning, like a bit of posture and uh, the right side is still weak because the left side affected her right side. Right. But she's okay. And I don't attribute it to anything, but to the fact that we actually started therapy immediately. When she was young. How old was she when you identified this? They told me at birth. So at I, birth? So I got to know at birth because she had quite complications. We had quite a bit of time in hospital. She was getting seizures. And every time she got a seizure, something would be damaged in her brain. Yes. She even got seizures later in her life. But, you know, we stopped the seizures to affect further damage okay. by taking medication. And we did therapy. So she can walk. It took her time to wear shoes comfortably. It took her time to... So basically, it was tough. I, I know how tough it can be for all the mothers with three other children or two or even her alone can be a problem can be so difficult but if you actually focus on therapy yes the other problem is that as parents we always want quick solutions right is there a tablet that she can take and speak yes is there an operation that can be done yes that she can walk is there you know that kind of thing and it's not something that can be done in most cases so you need patience you need to have early intervention Seek help whenever you can. See a doctor. The doctors will refer you to therapists. And I, I believe because at the center we have had so many success stories. We've had children go back to mainstream. We have children who are doing very well in school. And, and okay, we have children who actually come once a week just for their physical disability. But you find that the other things they have actually coped. So they just come in for behavior management, for physical disabilities. But you find that intellectually, they are getting there. Yes. You know, it's, it's very interesting because I think that one of the biggest challenges we have, not just in Uganda, but I think more so in Africa and Asia, mm. is the stigmatization. Yes, that's You know, so people yes. feel that if, they, um, if one of their children has uh, a disability, mm. uh, it could even be something as like polio or physical disability, yes, yes. their the way of handling it is to hide the child True. from mainstream society mm. and, and and in effect causing themselves much more hassle yes because they have to hide the child mm. but you know i went to i went to um brazil mm. in 2016 as the, the the manager of the of the national team mm. uh, and uh, shortly afterwards we had um, the special olympics mm. and this is where um, all, this. Uh, all these athletes who we'd say had or have mm. special needs participate mm. yeah. and of course one of them mm. uh, one of the gold medalists mm. in a particular event i think it was the 400 meters or the 800 meters his name is imong mm. uh, won a medal one of you one of uganda's first um uh gold medals at the olympics we don't have many yeah. you know we have akibua mm. kiprotich <laughs> uh, now we have cheptege mm. so i mean who did well at the commonwealth games but i think that uh, maybe the sensitization of parents as well that yes. these things are not there's not there's no shame mm. in ha in having a child with a disability yes. is, is one part of the process yes and it's also the culture just kills almost everything because um i had an encounter with somebody who was telling me how having such a child is a is a sign of riches so if you treat the child and the child gets better then your riches will go away. Superstitious. So I think what we have to do is really get involved in society, get to communities and let people know that actually these children can be something. There's so many people who have been, um, who have been um, very instrumental in, in, in the world scenarios like who have been autistic but can still do something very constructive. We have a child who left the center, he now plays music in, in uh, ISU. Yes. Does a, he plays music. This was a child who couldn't speak, who couldn't uh, you know, do toileting, do all those things. He was on the autism spectrum, but today he plays music. He's on the music team. Yes. So I, it's how much you put in that you actually get out. And I think our parents don't do this because they, they, they don't know. 
I would yes. say. There, there's very little information or knowledge about special needs in most developing countries. So um, it's something that, you know, we're working on and growing and, yeah. So, I mean, I mean I've, you know, even in, in, in Uganda, in Africa, you hear uh, about concepts, witchcraft and, you exactly. know, all sorts of, mm. of, of things like that. Mm. Yeah, these are the things that sort of, Yes. Uh, people are terrified of, yes, you know, yes, uh, yes. in households, in families, mm -hmm. someone's bewitching someone or Witching. somebody else. Mm -hmm. So they think that that child yes. is a product of something like that. True. Yeah, that's 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 very common because when we are doing assessments, we get the same we get the same comments. Some tell me I left my child with my sister. She had a nasty maid, or my mother-in-law, or I mean, they have all sorts of different stories. They don't know, and it all goes back to lack of knowledge and lack of information. But um, but we have done some work. I I don't work alone. I have a very big team. I my partner is Sheila Sabune. We started the center together. Yes, so I we, know Sheila. Yeah, so we kind of spread out and reach out to as many people, as many. Or, I mean, communities as we can, so we can let them know about um, the possibility of a child with special needs being somebody. No, they are somebody. When we get back, we'll be talking to Titi more about Tunaweza, and we'll meet DJ Cass Baby. So, Titi, this, this journey of yours, you know, um, setting up to Noweza, you couldn't have done it alone. Of course not. I'm sure yeah. there are other people that have helped you to, yes. to run the show and put it together. Yes. Uh, starting to Noweza, of course, was something I went into agreement with my husband. And uh, when he was okay with it, he gave me some money to start with. And then I also approached a friend of mine. We, we went to law school together. By the way, I'm a lawyer by profession. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I went to law school with Sheila and we've been friends for quite a long time. And at the time she was not here, but I gave her a call and we discussed this. So pretty much all this that I'm talking about and the whole journey, I've been in it with Sheila Sabune, yes. who's my partner, now lives here in Uganda. And she's very instrumental in the legal part of the management of Tunaweza. So you're both lawyers? You're both lawyers. No, no, not, no contracts get by. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> yes. So she's, 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 she's my partner and yes. we've been in this together since we started. And of course, we've written grants and requested for funding. We've received funding from Alma Philanthropies, which is a, a small community grant that, um, that grants small, small organizations. And apart from that, we collect some money from parents just to be able to sustain the, the running of the center because I employ close to 25 people. These are the therapists the and the therapists teachers. The therapists and the teachers. Yes. And considering that our program is individualized education plans and care plans, yes. we, we actually have, we have to have enough staff to see every child who yes. walks in. So yeah, that's why we do a little bit of charging. But we, we, we also have a scale on how we do this. We have parents who pay the full amounts but we also have a room for those who can't afford anything. I was just about to ask because, you know, you'd suspect that uh, uh, funding something like this, mm. uh, it, you know, it, it could come across as really expensive. It's extremely uh, expensive to have therapists considering there are very few in the country. Yes, you have to so, bring them in. So we, some, we bring some in and we use the ones who are here who also have some part-time jobs. Yes. So for us to keep them, we really have to make good pay for them to, to stay with us. Yeah. So we have parents who pay. We have fundraising that we hold and raise some money for the center. And we also have parents who are subsidized. Yes. So really we have a, a, a scale. So we have those parents who don't pay anything. Right. And before you enter the program, of course, we have to come to your home, look at you, do an assessment, how you're economically managing and all that. And we also look at the the child and the needs of the child and the family at large, because our program is not just for the children. We also reach out to the families. Yes. So we extend group therapy and, and, and therapy to parents because sometimes it's quite traumatizing. Right. And also look at the means that they can come in. So we've never rejected anybody, but we also have some times to charge so we can be able to run the center, day-to-day -day running of the center, because it involves a lot. So what about the government of Uganda? Do they support the program? Do they... Um... Uh, well, the government of Uganda has not been supportive. 
at all. Uh, reason being, I think they have also not been able to appreciate that there are some other conditions that are not necessarily the physical. Yes. Because they look more onto uh, the physical, the lame, the blind, the deaf, you know, those, yes. there are schools around available for right. such people. But I have not had government supporting like autism. Yes. Uh, but I have partnered with some government officials and UNICEF yes. to come up with some work that we are doing and helping other people. So uh, maybe through that partnership, the government is going to learn more about such conditions and the communities at large, because I'm sure they are trying to pilot what we do somewhere else. Yes. Uh, yeah. Is this just Kampala based or it's, 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 it's nationwide based? Mm. Apparently, because we don't have any other center out of Kampala, we are operating with this one in Kampala. But we have camps, so we go to Mbara, do assessments, do some trainings, help parents know the basics, then go to Gulu. But would rather would rather have centers there, but it's very expensive to put up. Of course, these kind I can of understand. So we are looking into we we have a strategic plan where we'll maybe have a bigger place, a bigger space where we can have boarding, and then we can have many parents come in. But one thing for sure is we have students from Sudan, we have students from Kigali, we have students mm -hmm. from from Barara, Mubende, Gulu. So it's hard for them to stay here all the time. So right. those are the ones who come in for three months program, then go back or every other two weeks. We have parents who are from Ethiopia and Somalia. They just come, we train the parents, we train the nannies, they stay here for a month or so, and then maybe go back and give them assignments. Then maybe when they can afford, they come back. But uh, most of the parents we have are from Rwanda. Those are, are out of Uganda. Others, we've given programs or recommended some therapists that are somewhere where we, we can Are you on social media? Is Tunaweza on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Well, Instagram, yeah. maybe not so much, but Yeah, yeah we are Twitter on social Facebook. media. We are, yeah. we, are, we are on Facebook and Twitter. Um, again, considering the stigma and, and the cultural uh, yes. requirements, we, we, we are not allowed to post under professional requirements, actually. We are not yes. allowed to post most of these kids. But I mean, pictures, you, can, but you can post not about the kids. Yes, but, but you we can post about, about activities that yes, are going on. That's the, the center's mm -hmm. there. Yes, the center's it's, there. It's available yes, if you want to come to We have a website to, too. Yes. So you can find us in, on Facebook. We have a website and it gives you quite a wide range of services we offer yes. and the activities that we carry out every year. Like right now, I think we have a three month ongoing assessment for parents who would like to assess their children since it's going to be a new year, yes. kids are going to school. Maybe if they come for assessments, we can be able to identify some delayed milestones that they might be seeing. Here we are at the Tunaweza Children's Center. Um, a center which has been designed to help children with special needs, especially autistic children, um, children born with uh, Down syndrome, um, plus a number of other conditions. Um, the Tunaweza Children's Center was set up by uh, Pamela Titi Kakonge and Sheila Sabune. And, uh, you know, we are here as the Cedric Live Show to show you what happens at the Tunaweza Children's Center and how uh, children living with disabilities can be enhanced. Here I am with uh, Pamela Titi Kakonge and Claire Murunji Mbawale. But you know these things of, of, of many names. But anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm here at Tunaweza <laughs> with Pamela and Claire and we're here to talk about uh, the Tunaweza Children's Centre which, uh, uh, of course, Titi and Claire are going to tell me about. Titi and um, uh, Sheila Sabune are the proprietors of uh, Tunaweza Children's Center. And um, Claire is um, a mother of one of the children who actually, um, uh, they go to school here, you say? They, yeah. Yes. Yes, they go to school here and they're looked after by the Tunaweza Children's Center. So, Claire, um, you... Um, First of all, you're a parent yeah. of a, a little boy, you told me, yes. who is uh, four years old. Four years old? Yes. What's his name? It's called Ahil Mbabali. Ahil Mbabali. So he has, uh, he was born with autism. 
or is it something that you know you know you can't tell a child is born with autism yes. until they get to a certain stage okay and as a parent you're concerned that some things are not going as you expect yes um like their speech right. the two year old who can say anything um their feeding habits because autistic children have different things like sensitivity like you can't cut his hair normally yes it's a fight Yes. You can brush his teeth, it's a fight. Yes. Because he has sensitivity. Yes. Yeah, in the on the touch, tactile sensitivity. Yes. They have sensitivity in their mouth. So they can't eat everything. Things like rice might feel like stones to them. Okay. So you get to notice some of those things. And then behavior, they don't really want to Even associate the with other feel, kids. The yes. Touch. Yes. Because my son wants to hug tightly all the right. time. And there are others. Who touch is the worst thing that can ever yes. happen to them. When you just touch them, it's yes. like you're pricking them with needles. Yes. yes. So they have exaggerated, um, what can I say? Sensory. Sens- yeah. Yes. Okay. Issues. So you notice things about your child that are not normal. So how did you, how did you, as 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 the mom, find mm-hmm. uh, you know, or the parents, you and your husband, how did you? Um, identify this issue because he's as you said he's only four years old we both have a medical background okay so when you look there's some things you look at and they're not they're not okay with yes. the child the two-year-old is supposed to say some things or mumble yes. some words supposed to behave a certain way supposed to eat some food yes but they won't prefer to eat period food all the time and, yes. and then something is not wrong with them they have mood swings, tantrums, like he, he would wake up in the middle of the night and he's crying nonstop and you, you just can't figure out the cause. They're not even talking, so you don't know what the problem is. They're not potty trained. They don't listen to instructions. You can see that something is not right with your child. Okay. And time and again, parents have, I, I want to call it denial. They're in denial. They just don't want to believe that something might be wrong with their child mm-hmm. so they probably think he has delayed or they were related to some uncle who had delayed speech yes society has a way of putting things together but in there i thought something wasn't right with my child so i started to look out for where i could get help right so and it's so sad that these places are very few in mm-hmm. this country and uh, special needs care is not everywhere so i was looking out as on social media i was asking people if anyone knows a, an early child center right so luckily i was social media is very important sometimes so someone it's one of the it's one of the better things you can do on social yeah, media so someone was asking for a speech therapist right. in one of the social media groups that i right. happen to be a part of and someone mentioned to now a children's center like go to Naweza Children's Center and get help. Yes. So I looked out for Naweza Children's Center on the net and they got their contact and I called. Right. So when I called, lucky enough, it's in my neighborhood. I just live in Nigeria. Okay. So I looked out for it. I got directions and I came. You cannot imagine how much I still feel it to date. Relief. I felt when I walked into this place, I felt like this was the right place for my child. Okay. It, it talked to me, it, it, it was speaking to me. So I brought him in for an assessment. Yes. I booked for an assessment, paid for it. So the day I brought him for an assessment, I, I was glad to be received by so many therapists. Yes. And yes, they confirmed my fear that he was on the spectrum. Okay, so how how long has he been um, in uh, Tunaweza? He's been here for just one year. Okay, and it's been a great year. And he's improved a lot. Greatly, he okay. he was potty trained in a few months. He could feed himself. He still does feed himself. Yes. Of course, what we were told what to do with the dad, we yes. have to limit his dad, cut out whatever is not needed for him yes. for his condition. We have to involve him in a lot of therapy sessions yes. uh, and whatever they recommended we do. And now I'm glad to say he speaks. Oh, very nice. Some words, of course, it's, it's not that perfect. Yes. He speaks, sometimes it sounds like Chinese, but you can relate. 
Yes. He reads a lot. He okay. does a lot of writing. He spells a lot. He has like over 100 words that he spells. It's very good. He recites the alphabet. He can re read one to a hundred. He knows most animals. He reads posters. When I'm driving him to school, he's reading Bella guys, reading Coca-Cola, he's reading Pepsi, he's reading DSTV, GoTV. He's doing perfectly well. And we're looking at putting him into mainstream school and we try it out and see. So all in all, you think Tunaweza has really helped? Definitely. And, uh... It is all to now Wednesday actually and every time I'm here I tell them they know it. I think that's why they chose me because for me every success. Oh you mean there's some who don't uh, every uh, progress. Everyone talk about Tunaweza different very yeah. well. <laughs> I, I attribute it to Tunaweza because as an individual, as a working mother, yes. There's a lot that you have to do. I would never have managed and I have learned from Tunaweza as well. There's mm -hmm. so many things I didn't know about autism. So together to now is because it's teamwork so what they tell you to do is what you must do yes so if they tell you don't give the, the, the kid sugar don't give them milk products no wheat and then you go home and stop the child with chapati you're not doing them any good yeah so, because after some weekend when parents i'm sure they have called you once so mondays are the days that we always have tantrum so we call parents and ask what happened did you give soda? What happened? And and you'll find a parent really confessing, said, you know, we had Christine's birthday, so we ate a little bit of cake and uh, soda. It's never a little bit. It's never a little <laughs> bit for a child. So because it's a new it, test, so you so really take a lot. You will really need to be in sync with us so that we work together together with us. I don't think we would have done much without their support. So I suppose it's sort of a, it's, it's, you know, you've got to have a very good support system as well as um, what Tunaweza are offering in terms of the therapy and the development of the child. We also have what we call the Parent Therapist Fellowship, yes. where parents and therapists actually meet and discuss these issues. Okay. We even carry out some training and upkeep, but most importantly, even individual parents come in and we talk about these issues. Because some, there is no success story that we've had that yes. has been 100% Tunaweza. So it's, it's the parent. Yeah, and it also starts with kicking out the stigma. You must kick out the stigma. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, I mean, I, I think I asked Titi about this when um, we met. Mm. But um, the stigma, what what is this stigma? You know, I think I I'm, also, we had it, me and my husband had this stigma up to a certain time when, okay, I'm a health worker, I'm a yes. health promoter, I promote the health, and I really think in the near future, if all goes well, I'll be promoting the health mm -hmm. of special needs people. Okay. Being a parent who's been through it all, mm -hmm. you're in denial, then you accept, and then you have to find ways of living with it, mm -hmm. then you have to cope, and positive living is the most important thing. So after you've accepted your child's condition and cried and wailed and asked God all the wise, mm -hmm. you have to kick the stigma out and appreciate that this is your child who was given to you by God and they are special in their own because autistic kids and all other people's special needs have something they are very good at. You just I, have to figure it out. I think I was watching, a, I don't know if this is applicable, but there was a, a series on TV mm -hmm. called The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he is... Uh, he, he didn't even study. Yeah, he, he knew medicine, but he's one of the best surgeons. Yeah, but he's a, he's an he's supposed to be a, he's a autistic. A, a, autistic. Yeah. Of I course, his really social skills are. He had some spectrum. Of Einstein. Yes. Mm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he did. So uh, they, they are very good at something. You just have to figure it out. So as a parent, you have to have your support structure built. And for me, I chose my support structure to be my family. Yes. Because we are we were raised and we're so close and we all live in the same neighborhood. So I had to bring them on board, my sisters, my brothers, uh, family basically. So that's the act, cause you need support. Some days you're late, you, you, you're late, you're busy, you're working till late and someone needs to pick your son, but they need to know what to do with him when they pick him. Yeah, cause they can't touch him, they can't pull him, they can't force him, they can't do the things that they yeah. do with other kids. Give them yeah, exactly. If you don't know them how well, they are going to They have to sort of be sensitized. Yeah, yeah, so well. you kick the stigma out, um, do what you are supposed to do, be in touch with your therapists, support. You need your family, you need your friends. Actually, I have friends who are like family as well. 
who understand him and I would send them here to pick him and he's good so you need to kick the stigma out that's the most important thing society will tell you lots of things they're like well child is in Uganda take them to their grandparents they'll do something for them or they'll tell you to get oh, a certain hub and put it in their mouth. All my son spoke when he was seven, five. Uh-huh. Some kids delay. Yes. Yeah, but it's, it's typically not it. Someone needs help. So, yeah, thanks to Tunaweza for. Well, thanks to Tunaweza. Uh, uh, Titi, you're doing a good job. Uh, Claire, I hope that. Uh, Ahil, you said his name? Yes. Ahil, you know, I'm sure he's going to be just fine. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, stigma is something that, you know, not just in not just children with autism, but you know, you find stigma with mental health issues, you find uh, stigma with uh, physical disabilities, uh, and people try to shy away from them because it makes them feel, I suppose, inadequate. Uh, But, you know, uh, what TT is doing in terms of Tunaweza and and Sheila, um, I think is something that is is really, really needed in Uganda. And um, I hope you're getting lots of funding. Maybe we will after this. Yeah, maybe. We will. Well, I, maybe my we'll my job my job is to create awareness and 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 be a uh, a friend of of Tunaweza. Uh, a, a lot of we have give a lot of respect to parents and um, you know what uh, Tunaweza are doing, and I ho- hopefully people who are watching the show will 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 find a way to chip in and and help these children. Um, so I mean I don't know. Do you guys have anything else to say? don't but it's to encourage people mm. that know people with special needs when they need love you need to love them mm-hmm. you need to treat them like other people mm-hmm. you need to give to care for them you need to find help for them because yes. they turn out to be something you never expected them to be so like at four years my son does things that people that are not autistic or are not on the spectrum okay it's not that bad but he's on the spectrum Yes. That children his age can't do, even in mainstream school. So, Claire, um, you, you, you're the parent of a child that, that's autistic. What would you say to um, other parents that are trying to deal with um, this perceived stigma of autism? How do, they, how do they come out of it? How do they come out of that shell? Because I'm sure right now, on you know as when, when we air this show there's going to be parents who are looking and saying okay now i can actually go and see to now how do you what would you say to them well this is your child and you can't change anything about them yes if you, you, you god gave you this child and and it's supposed to be under your care and you have to give them more than a hundred percent of yes. yourself yes emotionally yes. physically financially you have to protect them so they ought to come out the first step to having a child progress and, and on the spectrum is to talk about it because someone always knows something that you don't yes i am happy actually i am always looking out for children that don't look like they are okay so when i go somewhere i'm very fast to figure them out and i want to reach out to the parent and tell them you know what i think i have a child like that so you can do this to them or you can yeah. do this for them yes and usually they they're not comfortable talking about it but i try to get them to understand that i understand what they're going through because i've been through it mm-hmm. and um, there's something they can do for their child so talk about it be open about it because you do not know who you're telling because you might be talking to Pamela and you don't know that she actually has uh, this place. She's taking care of kids with special needs. Yes. Yeah. So you have to overcome it in whatever way. If you have to help your child, you must overcome the fear of what people will think, of what people will say, because they will say it. Whether you like it or not, they will say it. So you must, you, you have to they set say your it, foot even when on there's the nothing ground. Wrong. Yes. So set your foot on the ground and accept like, well, I think something is not right and seek help. That's it. Because if you keep this kid home and hide this child from people, you will not know that there's a place like this. Because I did not know there's a place like this. Okay. So, you know, uh, 
Cedric Live, the show, you know, we're, we're, we're not just an entertainment show. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do, and I said to Titi as well, is, you know, to find causes that we can push um, and try to inspire other people to go and, and look for help for their children and, and tell them that they, they, there is no stigma attached to this. It's all just a perception. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you, your son grows up to be a, an upstanding individual, and I'm sure he will he because he, he has a mommy who's basically doing what she has to do. I think the rest is up to him. No, I'm actually proud of him already because I know he's going to be <laughs> something. But because I, I let him interact with other kids now. Yes. But I, I am so proud. Like he does what they can do, and their age mates, and they're in school. Some are even older, and I'm like, that's my son. So you must support your kids, hundred percent. So guys, support your kids. We're here at the Tuna Weza Center. You can find them in Chiwatule on Papaya Close. Yes. Is right. there a plot number? Yeah. One one two one. Plot one two one. Uh, one one two one. One one two one. Yes. Okay, so here we are again at the Tunaweza Center on Papaya Close plot. One one two one. There we go. So Claire, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I hope that you know the show can create some awareness for other parents. Please call and, me every uh, time you want to create awareness for autism. I'll be here. Yes, and uh, hopefully we come and visit soon. Since now I'm a friend of Tunaweza. Yeah, so we we'll look forward to seeing you. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Right. thanks. I'm a volunteer here. I'm a student from Northeastern University, which is in Boston in the United States. Okay. Um, so I've been here for about two months helping out in the physiotherapy department. Okay. Um, here is where we work with kids who have any sort of physical complications, so movement disorders, we work with them on strength, balance, things like that. Yes. Um, so I've been working with Samson and Emma here. So Titi, tell us what this is. Oh, this is our daily schedule where we have uh, kids coming and going for morning glory. This is where we have all the kids together. Okay. So the kids are all in, t in this space. Yeah. They sing, they praise, they worship as we wait for everyone to report. Yes. So where you see session is when we have the breakouts. Okay. They go into different sessions because it's an individualized education plan. But uh, right now we're in class, so she can Hi. speak to you. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Who are you? I'm Rebecca Nasson. Rebecca Nasson. Yes. What do you do, Rebecca? I head the class department. Yeah, and in the class department, we handle quite a lot. For starters, when we finish the assessment, like we've been told, we run an objective assessment that runs for a month. Yes. And in that assessment, we clearly exhaust all the weaknesses and the strength of a child, because basically in the special needs education learning, we don't look at the weaknesses, but we look at the strength to uplift the weaknesses. Okay. So we shall get to know the strength of a child, and from then, we shall set an individualized education plan, yes. which is more of a, a, a tailor-made plan that suits the child's needs. Okay. We shall be addressing the specific problems or the specific challenges that that specific child has to help them be better, right. which, which we call the IEP, IEP, the Individualized Education Plan. So with that, we set goals that are quarterly, but we can break them down to monthly, and then we handle those goals as we evaluate to see if the client is making progress, and if not, we change the tactics to achieve the goals, and then we keep in touch with the parent to discuss the progress of the child, as well as sending home plans of how best the parent can support from the home end. Okay. Because basically therapy is continuous, we work from two ends, home and school. Then we also run the functional class, which normally has children that have general challenges, things that may be looking kind of similar, that they are not similar, yes. which is basically communication, social interaction, mm -hmm. and the basics, basically the writing, the comprehension, the reading, and all that. So we share them in general classes, because at the end of it all, we look at sending this child in the mainstream school, okay. if they can really progress there, which is basically the transition that when we have them here for a specific period of time, and we see that they have really done well, we send them off, we discharge them to a mainstream school, well, we keep doing follow-ups yes. to see how best they are coping and how to support the new teachers on how best to handle this particular client. Thank you very much. His sense of touch is hypo, or it is low. So like when you bury him, first of all, uh, like for a child who has a hypo, tactile sense, they always love weights on their bodies. So this sand is doing two things. It is bearing some weight on his body, and some other thing, it is 
somehow like stimulating the sense of touch on his skin. Oh, she's one of the the, the helpers yes. that helps us keep the children during their free time. Eh? Okay. So she's always in the daycare center right. working with these children, making sure they have eaten their break on time and everything. So I would like her to introduce herself. How does she normally introduce herself? She's going to do it. So talk. So she's saying, I am Sandra. I work with children in the daycare department as a special needs teacher. I am happy to help them grow and achieve their full potential. That's really nice. Very nice to meet you. The music therapy department. So, in the music therapy department, is, is a place, is, it's a department that helps us kind of achieve most of our goals because it improves the speech of the kids, it improves the participation of the children, it gives them a good mood and attitude to go on by the day. So, it's like our supplementary and most important therapy that is needed because it really stimulates the brain to be as active as it can. So Ebo is a music therapist, and actually he was in a session with this little girl. So we use many instruments. For instance, this is called an ocean drum. Eh? Cedric, what do you, f what does this sound like? The ocean. Exactly. So for kids who are prematurely born and kids with cerebral palsy and they are so jittery and they are stiff and we play such music and we use such instruments to calm them down so we can go ahead and do other therapies like physiotherapy that requires a lot of stretching, a lot of massage and stuff like that. This is who? Look, do you want to sing? Do you want to sing? Yeah. Okay, sing here. Yeah. What song do you like? Sing a song. So nice. You were so nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, guys. Yeah, that's really nice. Hello. How are you? 